Well, I would, I would, I have a couple thoughts on this little stream here of consciousness for timeouts. One is, I think it's really important for coaches to understand that every sit problem you're going through has a past, it has a present, it has a future. But since you can't control the past, forget about it. And you can't control the point after there are two points or three points. I remember Mark Dunphy in our gold medal match against uh, Russia in Seoul, timeout at 7.13, pulls them together and he goes, hey, one point at a time, this point, Karch, I want you to, and he was very specific about that point. And when I was a young coach, I was, you know, worried about trying to all the things that might happen down the road and all the things that just happened and I'm chewing them out about or whatever. And now I would say, look, if you're going to focus in the timeout, just focus on what you can control, which is this next point. Forget about the other stuff. And you also, you know, need to be pretty positive. Um, my, my, one of my words, there's words that I think about to ask that, um, that are words that I want to get rid of in the gym. And one of them is the word don't. And my timeout story, reality of that one, <laughs> that some of my Italian friends remember me doing this story when I was playing in the early 80s there. Long story short, we're playing this big match we're winning for the first time against them in 17 years. It's an away match, and we're up, you know, old score, 13-5, I think, or something. So it's pretty much over because we're up 2-0. And my setter served the bottom of the net, and then we rotated on the side out. And my middle blocker served the net, and we rotated on the side out. And I went back to serve. And my coach yelled, non bate la pala nella rete. And I said, okay. And in front of the fan, 2,000 fans or whatever, I served the ball backwards into the net, you know, away from the net into the crowd, just as high as I could backwards into the crowd. And then, of course, still 13-5, and then we got another one. I think I hit a pipe, and we got 14, and we won the match. And in the locker room, my coach goes, K Katso Fi. <laughs> and I said, I think you told me don't serve in the net. And he said, That's exactly what I told you. And I looked at him and I said, I didn't. Ugo, I mean, his name was Ugo Ferrari, but I brought in a couple of the players and I said, Tell him what you're thinking about when he's a coach says, Don't think, don't serve it in the net. And they go, oh, they hem and they go, I said, tell them what you're thinking. And they go, we're thinking about serving in the net coach. And I said, you're a really good coach, but you are incredibly negative. You say don't all the time. Get rid of it. Get rid of it and be telling us what you want. Not the 10,000 things you don't want, but the one or two things that you want us to do. Focus on that. And then, you know, you go out to dinner until 2 a.m. and celebrate the win and and we talked, and the next, you know, on Monday in the gym, he would go, non momento, vore, blah, blah, blah. You know, he literally almost overnight stopped using the word don't. And that is a word that should be outside of our gym. I mean, it's just, there's so many things to don't. And, and you know, words matter. And that's one of the biggest ones that happens to, be heard a lot in a, in a timeout. It, it's kind of funny on a timeout, you can see if the team is doing well, if they're really tight around each other. And when the team isn't doing very well, they, they like expand out like a flower and they stand further away from, from all the ranting and yelling that might be going on in the, in, in that situation. You know, it's, it's, it's really important for new coaches to understand, I think, and even, experienced coaches that nobody's making a mistake on purpose and so you need to stop treating it like they're doing it on purpose and start discussing with them as leaders on how to 
lead the team out of this situation that's that's going on, starting with that next point, because that's all you can control. So, I don't know. Yeah. This, this, not on, the, not on the expert questions list, but that was fun. No, no, <laughs> no. This, this also leads me straight to uh, something that actually only one coach mentioned, um, and that is Laurent, Laurent Tilly, and he talked about, look, I want, when he has this, it, it became something famous also after winning the gold medal, medal you know, like it, it, it has been repeating a couple of times, a couple of times by him, but it's, it's something I like also, and that it's, you know, like once that for him, the players that are in the court, it's more about the character and the, the character that they convey and that they show to, to the opponent and that they show to their team. Okay. It doesn't have to be something fake, but like how they, how they look in the court, that's the most important. Like if they don't have this like kind of boxer, you know, like heavyweight boxer kind of attitude in the court. And I, I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, like boasting or like coming across like, you no, know, no, no. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm an orangutan, uh, I want to attack you, yeah. but just yeah. about, about being confident, you know? And yeah, yeah and, and that's all I can ask for my players. Mistakes are part of the game, mistakes will happen. But if I see that they're confident in their own, uh, yeah, in their own being and their own actions, that's all I can ask for in the game. Like I cannot, at that moment, I cannot change anymore. But if I see a player that is not confident, yeah, the only thing I have to do is get him out of the game as quick as, quick as possible. Well, and, and I think we need to help athletes that come from other sports and other things realize that in our sport, um, everybody's looking at everybody all the time, essentially, at least during the breaks and the confidence that you're talking about. Because when I'm guarding you in basketball the whole time, I'm just looking at you and, you know, and I don't see the body posture, the lack of confidence of other people. And I don't see it in the vast majority of sports. But in volleyball, you're sitting there on the smallest thing around a volleyball court with 12 players making it pretty population dense, looking at each other through the net the whole time. And you see one person weak, like the coach said, and the other five may be confident, but everybody gets to see the one whose body posture is given up. And boom, that gives them strength. And and you can't have a timeout be because in a timeout you're kind of six starters against six starters with a head coach, but if the head coach starts to be a uh, an ass or you know thinks that chewing me out is going to help me play better, it's now eight on six, not seven on seven, and you know what? Don't give them that strength. Don't give them any of that power. Be part of my team, and trust that we are doing trust that your practices have helped us be as good as we can be right now um, because it, it's a journey it's a process bill walsh wrote this great book and the title of the book is the most important the score takes care of itself <laughs> if you do all these pieces of the journey you're more likely to win 